Okay, sorry for that. We are live and you can go ahead and start, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome to the August 5th, 2021 meeting of the Athens Clark County Planning Commission. In response to the coronavirus epidemic, this meeting is being held via the WebEx online meeting platform and is being broadcast on YouTube. Members of the public were provided the opportunity to email comments to the planning department prior to 12 noon yesterday. Members of the public may also address the planning commission in real time via electronic communication provided in the auditorium at 120 West Doherty Street, subject to safe distancing measures. For those of you viewing the meeting remotely, you'll find the meeting agenda with the YouTube meeting address on the planning department website at www.acc.gov.com slash planning. For those of you viewing the meeting from the auditorium tonight, on the table by the auditorium door, you will find copies of tonight's agenda and political campaign contribution disclosure forms for anyone wishing to speak in opposition to an agenda item before the mayor and commission. After staff presentation of an agenda item, we will receive public comment, first from the applicant, and then from those in the auditorium. 10 minutes are allowed to address the planning commission for the applicant or their representative, and also for any specified interest group representative who has requested additional time prior to the meeting. Three minutes are allowed for anyone else who wishes to address the commission. After public comment, the applicant or their representative may request a two minute response. Once the public hearing is closed, the planning commission will proceed to discuss and act on the item. We will receive no additional public comments unless requested by the planning commission. When addressing the commission from the auditorium, please speak from the designated place as directed by staff. For all speakers, please provide your name, address, and occupation for the record. For those in the auditorium, a timer device will display an amber light 30 seconds before the expiration of the allotted time and a red light upon expiration of the allotted time. So please pay attention to the light so that I won't have to interrupt you. For those addressing the commission remotely, you will also be expected to adhere to the specified time limits. Exhibits may be displayed by the applicants remotely or in the auditorium. Written correspondence received by noon yesterday has been forwarded to the Planning Commission and is part of the public record. Any additional written materials to be placed into the record must be read during public comment within the time limits previously stated. Please direct your comments to the Planning Commission and not to the applicants. And for those of you in the auditorium, please refrain from applauding or jeering any of the speakers. For everyone participating in this evening's meetings, please turn off or silence your cell phones. And for planning commission members, please mute your microphone if you're not speaking, use the chat box if you have any technical issues, raise your hand to your camera if you'd like to speak, and please wait to be recognized. And remember that this meeting is being recorded. Okay, so we'll just we will at this point move on to general business. Um, if you would like to go through item one, Mr. Chair. Yeah, um, do I have a motion? Item one is introduction of staff reports and other documents submitting to the planning commission at this meeting into the official record. Uh, Lucy, so move. Do I have a second? Alice, thank you. Um, all in favor, please indicate by raising your hand to your camera. Okay, we got it. All right, um, item two is approval of the July 1st, 2021 Planning Commission uh, minutes. Uh, Jim? So moved. So. And Lucy, I see a second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you all. All right. Um, item three is May Court's review and public comment. Brad, is there a May Court's report? We do not have a report tonight, and it looks, Mr. Chair, like there is nobody in the auditorium. Robert, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So we have no public comment either. 
All right. Uh, then moving on to new business. Um, Brad, are we ready for the first item? Yes. Uh, first yeah. item is 3030 Danielsville Road. Um, it is a request to change feature land use from rural to single family residential and from AR to RS25. And Rick will give the report. Are you able to see this? Yes. Okay, I just want to be sure. The first time I used a double monitor. Okay, so this is 3030 Denzel Road, um, zoning case 2021-05-1322. We have two requests tonight uh, to change the rural future land use designation to single family residential and to change the zoning of AR agriculture residential to RS25 single family residential. And this is a location map of the subject property that's asked, being asked to be rezoned. And I, I mentioned uh, earlier, I would point out um, the same owner of this property also owns these two properties. If you can see my cursor there, um, and these are both off of Sweet Gum Way in the adjacent neighborhood. And so the purpose of this is to be able to uh, combine the back part of this lot. Uh, with this other lot on Sweetcom Way, so they can build an accessory building uh, with the, for this house on Sweetcom Way. So this is the aerial is photograph. Uh, you can see that there's a house at the, towards the front of the property. I'll have a picture of that in a second. Uh, you can see the neighborhood uh, next door, which is zoned RS25. And this is the house on the property in question. And so again, we have two requests, the future land use change as well as the zoning change. Um, currently, it's just a single family dwelling on the subject property. And this is to allow uh, recombination with adjacent parcel has been the stated purpose. It would allow, um, I believe there's enough frontage here. So the R25 would allow possibly just a second parcel. Um, and so you see the future land use here. This is um, showing the future development change um, and you can see it's sort of isolated i've got a another i'll show you another picture of that in a second this is the rs25 uh, change if it goes from ar rs25 is adjacent won't be won't be an isolated district however when we look at the future land use you can see we're kind of in a sea of green um, I think the quote a Beatles song there, but anyway, um, we're just in a sea of green of uh, rural development. And then we have a single family residential area uh, several hundred feet away up here in the Norwood area. So as you can see with the, the development of the lots, there's very few lots in this immediate area that are uh, 10 acre lots that meet the rural uh, minimum lot size. Uh, we are reckoning denial. It's not uh, really anything to do with the zoning uh, change, but the zoning change has to match up with the future land use designation. That's by code. And the future land use designation would be isolated. And so instead of a fragmented sort of one at a time uh, change to future land use, uh, an area wide consideration may be more appropriate than having everyone have to come through uh, one at a time and pay fees and get surveys. Um, plan developments would also require binding plans, which a lot of times didn't seem necessarily for just one house or a shed to be built. Um, so just uh, wanna keep that in mind too. That is an option, but it would require forever a binding plan on their single family residential property. So that, that concludes the staff report. Thank you, Rick. Uh, and now we'll hear from the applicant. Uh, yes, I, I'm getting the uh, future land use plan, and I saw the map there. Um, my name is Neil Fountain, by the way. I own 3030 Danielsville Road and 121 Sweet Gumway, 131 Sweet Gumway, which are adjacent, part of the Timberwood subdivision which currently is RS-25, but the future land use plan seems to be changing that to 
rural agricultural, I would assume. And my thing is, is this lot currently is surrounded on two sides by all RS-25 and the future land use is a sea of green. So I'm, co I'm confused about the, uh, you know, changing the, the whole sweet, the, the whole timber was subdivision to agricultural is seemingly a uh, adding a bunch of non-conforming lots. So I, I guess my ba my basic thing is I don't see where it's I really don't see where it's a really that big of a stretch to rezone this particular sliver here that I own RS25 when it's surrounded by other RS25. And also I have a land based classification classification standards map here. And the yellow seems to be in this area, which is single family living. So I'm I'm confused about the what's the difference between the future land use map and the land based classification standards. Is that that just future versus current? Or? Uh, that was a question, I guess. I was. Okay, and, and we will generally, I mean, you, we'll let you go ahead and, and complete your presentation. And then um, if one of the planning commissioners wants staff to address it, they will, they'll ask us to do so. But I've, I've made a note of it. Okay, well, it, uh, basically, it doesn't make sense for the to, for the plan to rezone adjacent RS-25 properties, including half a Timberwood subdivision to agricultural. It seems like it represents further barriers to affordable housing, and that seems to in my general general indication that Athens Clark County one of their primary concerns. So I guess that's the end of my argument presentation. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Fountain. Um, is there anyone in the auditorium? Uh, who wishes to speak for the application? We, we did have um, also the agent the um, for the owner was uh, Leah Calvert. I don't know if, if she is also on with us. I didn't know if she wanted to speak as well. No, I think uh, Mr. Townsend said in everything that he, you know, was kind of relevant to to his needs. I mean, his desire is. <laughs> Make an effort to to upgrade that property in the back end, but as it is now, he can't really do that. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think he said everything he needed to say. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. Is there anyone in the auditorium? There is no. Okay. Uh, well, normally at this time, uh, Mr. Fountain, you would have the opportunity to rebut any public. Well, uh -oh. we have lost our chair. <laughs> See if, if we can get him back in just a minute. Um, I think what he was going to say, Mr. Fountain was that. You would normally have an opportunity to rebut if there was any opposition, but since there was none, uh, we would normally come behind the rail at this time and uh, move into planning commission discussion of the item. Um, I'll just I'll just stand in as the chair if that's okay, and we'll get started and see if he can't join us. Are you guys okay with that? I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, Planning Commission discussion, um, and maybe I could just jump in and, and answer Mr. Fountain's question first, and then we'll get to Kristen. You know, he was he was asking about the future land use, and, and I'd looked. I've still got the original 20 or the 2000 land use amendments that were when this very significant rural land use designation or green belt went in, and it it was at that time, 21 years ago, that this area was designated as rural, and it has been since including the subdivision of Timberwood being within that rural area. So it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a matter of changing 
that we're asking to change it to rural it is currently rural and it's being it it needs to be modified to a single family designation in order to classify it as rs25 so um, with that Kristen, i think you had your hand up first well i i had a, actually a similar question as the applicant because i was hoping we could go back to the slides that showed the the kind of before and after of the land use map showing that yellow sliver so do sure. I have it correct then that the subdivision was built prior to the future land use designation of rural and then um so, you, so that's how you have this neighborhood in this rural area even though there is the other um single family zone up the the road there that's why that happened that's right and okay. and yeah you know, and understand that you know in in 99 when the, most of the land use work was being done uh, ahead of the rezoning you know this was the first time we had had really a green belt so if you look at overall zoning of this area we've got an rs25 subdivision that was rural but if you go up to where the road splits and it, you see danielsville goes to the right isla goes to the left that's all listed as rural too and there is a there's kind of a smattering of commercial zones in there that also are not compatible with that designation. But I think probably the thinking was 20 years ago, the first two large lots to the southwest of Timberwood subdivision. That was probably a logical point to start that green belt in this area. And, and so then it just went ahead and encompassed all of it except for some reason, and I don't know that I can give you a logical answer as to why Norwood subdivision, which you see at the very top center, that is currently single family was designated single family, but Timberwood was not. But it's been this way for about 20 years. Okay, thank you. I didn't understand the, the historical aspect of all that, but that makes sense, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Lucy? Um, as we talked about in the, um... Agenda setting, I would like for the, um, uh, um, I would like to know what the uh, petitioner wants to do with this piece of property if it's subdivided. Yes. This is for the public. Okay. Uh, I, I have a bunch of hobbies, cars, uh, building furniture, stuff like that, and I just don't have a place to do it. I own the land. And it would be nice to have a shop there of, uh, I don't know. I mean, I really don't have any plans. It usually varies somewhere around 2,800 square feet. I would like for there to be a bathroom in it. Uh, I would like for it to have water for washing my hands, obviously, if I'm working on cars, uh, you know, basically a, a hobby, you know. Thank you. So, yeah, sure. Anybody else, Alice? Uh, yeah, that, that, I wanted to bring this up particularly because Matt's not here to bring it up for himself, but uh, we did. We, this is another thing we also addressed in the agenda setting meeting. Um, uh, the, I've, I've got the growth concept map that um, the planning commission has been working with for the last uh, few months up. And this area is in, it, it, am I correct in saying that this area is actually in area five? as an area of interest for changing the future land use map? I believe that's correct. And I believe this was an area that we had shown on the growth concept that would lead to future land use that we were recommending consideration of changing it to that suburban instead of rural designation. Um, I, 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 the, the planning commission has had discussions about each of these areas, and I'd be really interested to hear from my fellow planning commissioners um about their thoughts on this request in the context of these discussions we're having right now lucy um once again and i'm it looks to me like based on the zoning that this should have sewer is that correct this part of danielsville road has sewer i do not i don't think there's sewer up there now Okay, there is therein lies the problem, and that's where this goes back to um, 1999 and 2000. Is that there was a lot of discussion about where the sewer lines would go. Alice is nodding her head. I can see that from here, and there's that's where uh, infrastructure is a great part of this. And 
lot by lot changes can be very problematic when you're dealing with infrastructure, especially water and sewer. So I just want everybody to understand that, especially people who haven't been on the planning commission as long as I have, or Alice was on the commission and the planning commission. So I just want everybody to understand infrastructure is a huge part of where zoning and land use changes. By the way, I just got a note from um, Matt that their internet is down at his house. Okay. Uh, Monique? Hi, I'm just wondering uh, how much increased traffic is expected with the zone change? No, I, I think given the nature of what they're asking to do and, and, and more importantly, <laughs> Given the configuration of, of this, these two pieces of property, if the zoning did change, zero. I mean, I, I'm not sure that they may be able to create one additional lot potentially, even though that's not what they're wanting to do. But certainly, could not do any more than that. Okay, thank you. Kristen. So, I have a question for the applicant. Um, so, if if among the three different properties that they own, I guess I was curious what's preventing them from building what they need to build just on the law as it stands. Um, the, well, the, the house in the front is very close to the road. It's about 60, 70 feet off the road. And I want to split this. I was trying to split this thing up where I could possibly eventually sell that particular particular piece of property and keep the property that my shop's on. So I'm trying to do it with a um with that in mind. Plus I, I was wanted to ask about the what are the standards for uh obviously it would have to have a septic tank out there since city sewer aren't there. Aren't the standards uh, minimum standards for a septic tank uh an acre per tank? I mean it, it is generally if y'all are okay with me answering this, it's generally 25,000, about a half an acre. Okay. A minimum lot size for a water. If you've got county water and septic tank, it's just a little over a half an acre per lot. So just to be clear, this is a 2.5, a little bit bigger than a two and a half acre lot. So splitting this thing, say it's RS25 and I split the first, uh, I split the 30, 30 single dwelling house off, you know, with a, I don't know, a 30,000, whatever makes sense with the way the yard looks. You know, I'm not interested in like doing a mold. I'm not interested in ma uh, maximizing this property because already, obviously RS25, you know, that's four lots or however many. Uh, but, you know, what I would like to do is separate off that house, you know, say it's 35,000 square feet for that lot. And then the rest of it is a place for my shop. So that's plenty of room to uh you know be within standards on another septic tank situation that's just what i wanted to say to clarify how big the lot was okay. lucy lucy uh brad my brain may be fried but the fact is is i think it's forty five thousand square feet of usable soil it's um i think it's twenty five thousand five hundred feet of usable of but what they determine as suitable soil right and that's therein lies the rub regardless of what it is we have to know that they've actually got that much soil that will work and i have to tell you i just put in a new septic tank on property that i own and it's over two acres and I mean, there was no problem with that, but it obviously had some soils. I don't know about this property, whether it does or not. You can say I can put in a septic tank, but unless you have got the suitable soils covered, it won't work. Yeah. And, then, and, and that's all administratively evaluated um, as part of the subdivision process. It's reviewed by the health department. Uh, Alice? Can you hear us? You can hear us. We can't hear you. Sorry, my uh, uh, my internet is a bit. Can you hear me now? Yes. No. Nope. Okay. Yes. Am I again? Okay. 
I, I live like a mile from Matt and my internet is a little unstable as well. Um, uh, to, to pull it back to what is actually um, in front of us right now, um, I, think, I think that we're grappling with the question of whether we would approve a request like this or recommend approval to the mayor commission, um, even though it, you know, based on staff's clear and excellent anal analysis, we would be recommending like a, you know, a tiny little sliver in the um, AR zone to, to change to um, an incompatible land use with that. Um, so um, listening to the applicant, I feel like his requests and his, um, you know, desired use for this property is so modest that, you know, why wouldn't we say yes? Um, but the reason we might say no is because we're concerned about precedent of, you know, uh, you know, putting this isolated RS-25 in the middle of an AR zone. So, um, so I, I feel like that's the question that I'm grappling with myself. Um, and I'm really not quite sure where I would come down on it. Um, but I would like to hear other people talk about that. Uh, Kristen? Yeah, and to get back, Alice, to your original question of like looking at the future land use map and the idea of changing that area, um, I was I was looking at it too um, with the with the staff put together, and um, the fact that there's no sewer service there is what really like I feel like that was driving a lot of our decisions for the conversion from uh, rural to single family residential, and if this were just moved over a little bit more toward highway 29 i would probably be more in line with letting it be rezoned um i gotta be honest i'm i'm really conflicted because i completely understand what the applicant wants to do i really wish we had some sort of thing in writing or like some kind of drawing to, to know what was actually planned for this space and that everything would actually work as planned um and that's kind of that and the absence of sewer service is really what makes me like hedging more on the side of no, only because I really feel like all those ducks need to be in the row before I can get behind creating a little island of a zone in this area. Jim? I think considering that this development is already non-conforming and that the change in use will be compatible with, with the non-conforming uses that already exist in the area, that this will have a minimal impact, and I would be in favor of saying yes. Anybody else have any? Okay, I think Matt is back with us. And unmuted, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys and I've been on with my phone for the last 10 minutes and I heard uh, most everybody's comments. I just lost you for five minutes there. Uh, our internet seems to be back up now and hopefully it will remain so. Okay, very good. Well, I will, I will hand it back off to you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I heard uh, comments that, that Kristen and Alice and uh, Jim just made um, when I was uh, here on phone. Um, does anyone else have any? Um, other comments. I'll just make a comment that I mean yeah. I agree with what Jim just said. Um, with the the already non-conforming use, um, this would just actually make that conforming within what's already there. I have a hard time voting no for this for what the applicant has put before us. So I, I'm leaning toward voting yes. Thank you, Joey. Um, does anyone else uh, have any other have any comments? Yeah, Lucy. As far as precedent setting, and especially in this corridor, and especially in this part of Athens Park County, I would see this as uh, non-conforming on top of non-conforming is not a good idea. And I will make a motion to deny the request for the future land use. Okay, uh, do I have a second for that motion? Kristen. Uh, 
Huh? Any discussion of that motion? Okay, I didn't get a, a chance to weigh in on, on sort of the merits of it, but I do have a couple of comments I want to make on uh, that are appropriate to the motion and to the application more generally. Uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly with what Jim said uh, a couple of minutes ago. Um, also, I, you know, generally speaking, I'm skeptical of straight rezones without knowing what is planned. Um, here, I think that, you know, what the applicant has in mind seems more consistent with the conditions on the ground than um, this uh, sort of fictional uh, land use. You know, the, the uh, current land use map indicates the entire area is rural. Um, but as the staff report notes, there are almost no parcels there that are anywhere near the 10 acre minimum lot size. There's a bunch of commercial uh, stuff along Danielsville Road. Um, the adjacent property is RS-25. It's already single family use, despite the rural land use designation. So it strikes me that uh, there's an inconsistency between conditions on the ground and the rural land use designation. Um, and so um, I, I intend to vote against the motion because I think the application would bring um, the subject parcel in uh, conformance with conditions already on the ground on the adjacent um, parcels. Um, and, and so the, the odd one out here is the um, future land use map, which doesn't reflect um, what's actually happening on the ground in this area. Uh, with that said, I also agree with what the staff said staff report said, which is that uh, an area-wide consideration of a change in the future land use map may well be appropriate. Um, if this motion passes, um, that may be the applicant's next best bet is to um, await our process by which uh, changes to the future land use map are already under consideration. It, it would strike me that this particular corridor is very well suited for a change, given that the conditions on the ground don't uh, fit with what the future land use map says um, this area should be like. Uh, so the other um, thing that that uh, if this motion does pass, um, the applicant might consider a, a PD, a plan development application for this, which would enable us, uh, I think, procedurally to, to uh, grant a variance from the minimum lot size of the AR zone and enable them to subdivide the lot and achieve his goals uh, in a different, through a different process. Um, so those are my comments on the motion. Any other discussion of the motion? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Alice. Yeah, please. Sorry, I, I just wanted to, I, I've been a new member on the planning commission before, so I just wanted to uh, encourage the chair to uh, to remind people what they're voting for or against, uh, because this is one of those things where it is a motion to deny. And so if you say yes, you deny, if you, say, you know what I'm saying, Matt? So, of course, so yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, and for the benefit of the new members, um, because this application requires a change to the future land use map, um, there are two decisions we have to make. One, should we change the future land use map? And if so, um, then two, should we grant the requested rezone? And so the motion pending uh, is a motion to deny a change to the future land use map, um, which would prevent uh, the applicant from, from uh, getting the rezoning that, that he wants. So if you vote yes on uh, Lucy's motion, you're voting to deny this application. Okay, um, Brad, do you wanna, or Rick, do you wanna call the roll? Rowland? Yes. Sanders? No. Tucker? No. Anderson? Uh, Jim, you're muted. No. Goodrum? Katie, if you can hear us, it looks like you're muted. Uh, can you hear us, Katie? Uh, yes, um, I, I vote no. 
Kidman. Alice is. Alice. Can you hear us? Kidman. Uh, yes. Morales. Yes. Pass. No. Okay, so it's um, the motion fails three to five. Okay. Okay, do I have a motion uh, given that that motion has, has failed? I'll make a motion to approve the zoning request. Now, Brad, procedurally, yeah. do we need to first have a motion to approve the land use request? Yes, yes, yes. technically, Joey, your, your okay. first motion would be to a few, uh, approve the change to the future land use. We'll have a second vote on the zoning if this passes. Okay, so I th I'm sorry, I thought with that denial that it that meant it was approved. Okay, I make a motion to approve the future land use. Okay, uh, any discussion of that? Or uh, I see we, we have a second from Jim. Second from Jim. Okay, without discussion, uh, Rick, do you wanna call the roll? Tucker? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Goodrum? Goodrum? Katie, if, if you're, uh, if you can hear us, we cannot hear you. I don't know if you're muted or not. We come back later. Um, Finman? No. Morales? No. Pass? Yes. Rowland? No. Sanders? Yes. And a good drum? Well, at the, um, unless Katie is able to vote, um, we can we can give her another minute and see if we if she can connect. But um, she voted no on the last one, and so if we if we have a tie, um, my vote would be yes on this motion but, um, to approve it. So if we if we can't get Katie back, um, I'll cast the tie breaking vote in favor of this motion. Uh, so we're gonna have a. I have a four in favor and three against the motion. Is that, okay. is that correct, Brad? Is that what you have? That's what I've got. Um, I'm, I'm showing Katie is being on and not muted, so I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I guess it, with Matt voting in favor, I guess it would pass either way. Um, well, I think uh, with, with the with with Matt going ahead and voting too, I think it's I think it would pass. Yeah. Regardless, move on to the zoning motion. Yeah, I would say yes. Move on to the zoning the motion. So the future land use change passes, which now allows us to make a motion if desired to request to rezone the property from AR to RS twenty five. I'll make a motion to um, approve the zoning request from AR to RS-25. Do I have a second? Jim. Thank you. Um, ready to call the roll? Yes. Okay. Tucker? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Goodrum? Okay, Hinman? Yes. Morales? Yes. Pass? Yes. Rowland? No. 
Sanders? Yes. Okay, it, pa it passes. Um, Katie's off now. Okay, it's, uh, yeah, she's off right now, I guess. Yeah, I think we completely lost her. It passes six to one. Okay. Okay, so the motion passes for the benefit of the applicant. Um, as you know, the planning commission is a recommending body. This will move forward to the mayor and commission at their September meeting with a recommendation to approve. Thank you, Brad. Um, moving on to uh, our next item, uh, 3341 Lexington Road. Rick, uh, do you want to deliver the staff report? Yes. Yes, I'm, and I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm, it's the first time I've used a dual monitor. I uh, understand you guys are looking at the more restricted screen. Um, it, it still works for now, Rick. Go ahead. It's fine. Okay, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll practice next time. Um, okay, we're looking at. Uh, three, three. If, 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 if I may, just for a second, because I know this. I know this, and my student taught me this. If you go to display settings, um, it'll allow you to get rid of the next slide thing, but it's, it's also okay. fine the, the way it is. Okay. Top, top left, middle one, Rick, display settings. Is that better? Try it again. Wow. I've got a swap presenter view and slide, so I'm trying. Is that you're still looking at the restricted screen? Yeah. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, well, if you if it's okay, I'll just continue and um, I'll, maybe I can blow it up if you guys need to see something in more detail. So, um, okay, so we're looking at three three forty one Lexington Road. Uh, it's, an amend, it's an amendment to a, a current special use in the CG commercial general airport overlay. And as you can see, most of the property is in the airport overlay. That's the, the hatched area, which is the reason for the original special use. It's actually now, um, as Brad mentioned earlier, a retail store is actually permitted in the airport overlay. But when they went there originally, they got a, a variance and so that variance was approved by the mayor and commission. It, it, it can't be amended except by the mayor and commission. So this is the aerial view showing the current uh, Lowe's uh, store. And then uh, again, there's an amendment to special use. Um, and then there's a variance. So there'll be two votes on this, a variance to the maximum contiguous building length. There's a limitation of 300. Um, feet and which has already exceeded somewhat and this will add a little bit more to the building length. So this is the uh, future land use which will not change general business and the zoning with the uh, special use again the zoning will not change we're just amending the special use. Um, this is the, the site plan that was given to us you can see on the left the um, the, you know, the, the small addition there, I mean, I must say small comparatively to the size of the Lowe's building. Uh, you can see it's on the, the west side, the airport side um, coming out there. It's, it does sit behind uh, the front a little bit, uh, especially behind the portico chair, uh, which is used to uh, pick up uh, building materials at that end of the building. Some architectural elevations, uh, the, the front, and then uh, you'll see the full uh, side uh, image there. And um, let's see, where's my recommendation? <laughs> so we are recommending approval. I apologize for that too. Uh, we are recommending approval of the variance and the special use permit. And that concludes the staff report. You're muted, Matt. Thank you, Brad. And thank you, Rick. Uh, is the applicant um, prepared to speak? Hello, good afternoon, good evening. Um, my name is Benton Bellello. I'm with Duplantis Design Group, um, 314 East Bayou Road in Thibodeau, Louisiana. 
Uh, we're the civil engineers uh, working on this project with Lowe's. Uh, as the staff report uh, mentioned, this is a addition to the existing Lowe's on Lexington Road for a tool rental center. Uh, it will be uh, the addition will be on the west side of the building, as mentioned, and it will uh, it will add about 32 feet to the overall length of the building, uh, which would come to about uh, to 483 feet. Um, the as mentioned, it's a the minor addition uh, does not affect the uh, existing operations of the store. Um, it. Uh, as far as parking, there's there's no uh, adverse effects to parking. There's actually no additional parking required for the the tool center. Um, it, it's essentially just an added uh, service, uh, a, a new service that the store will offer to the customers. Uh, I I believe the staff report explained the explained the addition and the request well. So uh, on that note, I'll. Uh, request or or respectfully request uh, approval of this and I can answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Biello. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone in the auditorium who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Mr. Chair, I, I think the person you're seeing in the auditorium is our 6th district commissioner, Jesse Hull. So he is here to watch the meeting. He's not here to speak there. It's a welcome commissioner. There's nobody else there. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. I, <clears throat> Mr. Biello, normally you'd have 2 minutes to rebut the uh, public comment if you wish, but I, I take it. You don't need that. Um, so uh, we'll take it behind the rail um, and uh, Brad procedurally, am I right that we have first a vote on the variance and then a vote on the special use approval? Yes, you, you can discuss it as, as a whole, but two votes required first on the variance, second on the special use amendment. Okay. Um, Lucy. I know this area very well and I see no problems with this. I've known this area for decades. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move approval on the variance. Joey. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, any discussion of that motion? Then let's proceed to the vote. Uh, Rick, will you call the roll? Rowland? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Okay. Uh, Kinman? Yes. Morales? Yes. And pass? Yes. It's unanimous. Okay, so the variance has been approved. We now need a motion or discussion on the special use amendment. Lucy? I'll make a motion to approve the special use amendment. Do I have second? Thank you, Joey. <clears throat> Rick, do you want to call the roll? Okay, Rollin? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Kinman? Did you call my name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Morales. Yes. In pass. Yes. It's unanimous. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Brad, does that conclude that item, or is there any other that, house? Yes, yeah, that that concludes that item, and as with the other one, this recommendation and variance will be forwarded to the mayor and commission at their September voting meeting. All right, um, so moving on to item three. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Biello. Uh, moving on to item number three. Uh, Rick, will you present the staff report? Okay, uh, this is 3668 Atlanta Highway. It's a planned development. Uh, this is a, for tonight, it's preliminary. 
plan development to receive with comments um, so they can take the comments and, and come back with a master plan for a formal recommendation. Uh, this is a request from Commercial General to Commercial General Plan Development. The location map, it shows the location at the intersection of Atlanta Highway and the outer, or actually the inner Loop 10. And this is the site of the former Logan's Restaurant. It's an aerial view there. This is a little close-up aerial of the restaurant. And so the request is to construct a quick trip gas station and convenience store. Uh, the zoning is compatible with general business future land use, so we don't need to, to amend the future land use map. Uh, there are 12 requested waivers. Um, and so just to go down those really quickly, uh, the first is maximum parking um, from 30, 40, 88 spaces. Uh, there is a shared parking agreement um, with Olive Garden, so combined it's about 230 spaces for the two uses. Um, there's a second request, reduced landscaping, which vice versa increases lot coverage by 1%. Uh, request for front yard parking, this actually has been approved already by the hearings board. So they, if this request was denied, they could still use the front yard parking variance. Uh, request number four is uh, conserve tree canopy from 10% to 5.3. Uh, these normally are, are permissible because um, obviously that's existing tree conditions. Um, so it's just basically pointing out they're going to be less than ideal, but that's the, all they have right now to conserve is 5%. Five, 5%. Uh, total tree canopy um, requirement is 40, and they're asking for 31%. Um, Parking lot trees, there's a minimum one tree per seven spaces. And we believe, we don't know the exact, um, some of the species, we don't know the what types they are, if they qualify as parking lot trees. But from where they're located, we believe this may be met. So it may not be necessary. And maybe we could uh, get with the applicant afterwards and see if that could be met. Contiguous parking, uh, there's a maximum number of 14 spaces that's allowed, and that, that could be one row of 14, or it could be, you know, face to face rows of seven. Um, and it needs to be broken up by a landscape island. Um, and we believe that that could be possible with about six, the loss of about six spaces. Um, pedestrian walkways are required. And this is something where um, it's only required if you have an area of about 50 spaces. If the back parking area could be reduced somewhat, um, that may not be required, but it's because that large um, back parking area is why that pedestrian walkway is required back there. Street trees, um, the, there's a recent amendment where the forester or arborist can waive the street tree standard. Um, basically the location as long as the intent of the ordinance is met so they do have the authority and so we recommend the applicant get with our uh, forester who handles street trees and to see if that can be worked out furnish planning strip there's just a little hedgerow there i think it's one or two feet uh, i'm sorry that's the parking lot screening get to the next one the furnished planning strip is a little uh, a little short the parking lot screening i it looks like a small gap in the hedgerow. Um, and then parking buffer. That's um, this is actually something we can accept. There is a cross access and parking easement. So basically, although it's two different properties, it almost looks like one as far as the use of the spaces. So um, a parking buffer would be required along the property line normally, shared property line uh, between parking spaces, sort of the break up to parking. But in this case, um, you know, with the cross access easement, we sort of agree this is um, something we can uh, that, that may be approvable. Um, this is the future land use again, just showing us uh, general business, the zoning. Uh, the only thing that would actually change on this is uh, PD would be added as a designation. The um, site plan as proposed, you can see. Um, the location of the convenience store about in the middle of the property, um, parking along the, the loop in the back, as well as between the Olive Garden and the store, and then that parking that's been approved by the hearings board up front in front of the building and then down a little bit down the west side of the property line. 
And you can see the gas canopy um, or pumps there uh, sited along the front uh, between the building and the highway. And just to blow up again, um, you can see the fuel uh, storage tanks that are between the canopy and the highway. Right now, there is a driveway close to the loop that will be closed off. Uh, GDOT has looked at this plan and, and given their comments. Um, and so uh, the traffic light that now goes into the Logan's property is being moved down with the realignment of James Mill Road um, you know, across the streets on now on the other side of the liquor store. And so, or will be, uh, James Mill Road will be cul-de-sac and the new alignment go uh, between the cemetery and the liquor store and come in right here uh, now, um, I'm sorry, right here now in front of Olive Garden. The, the driveway for Logan's will move uh, down here as a right in, right out only. So you'll have a, again, they, they can get to the signal if uh, because of that cross access easement, the customers at the gas station will be able to go uh, to the light if they want to turn left and go back towards town. <clears throat> Otherwise, it is a right in, right out only on the Logan's property or the uh, quick trip property. Uh, this is just a tree management plan um, in case questions come up, but uh, you can see the, the trees uh, uh, that are there to be conserved. Um, this is the, these are the elevations, the front up top and then the, um, the other sides and back. And the, uh, the gas pump uh, canopy. Uh, you can see there's eight uh, pump islands. So tonight is to a preliminary to receive the comments. Um, staff's main concern is to see if we can reduce some of those requested waivers. Some of them are really close. Um, other ones, um, you know, just may, may take some modification, but uh, hopefully we can work together and get that number down. Um, a lot of them are based on um, an easement with Olive Garden parking and access easements. Um, that is a private easement agreement that wasn't, you know, athens Clark County wasn't party to that and we're not, we didn't require it for Olive Garden to go in. Um, so, uh, but that's, that is the basis for a lot of the waivers. And so we have 12 waivers with one use, uh, basically the plan developments for the purpose of waiving 12 standards. And again, we think some of those, um, even with the easement agreement, uh, uh, we could possibly reduce that number. Um, so hearing from other departments, there's a traffic study needed our, for a traffic engineer to look at. Uh, Public Works would like to make sure that we have an acceptable stormwater management facility. We have a recent stormwater reduction standard that uh, they don't feel like, they, or it might be the water quality standard, I believe, they feel like is not acceptable. So to talk to Public Works about that. Also provide public utilities with water and sanitary sewer capacity evaluation. Fire Marshal would like to talk to them about the uh, west side of the building, how they can get to access to the west side of the building in case of a fire. Um, clar clarification, as I mentioned about the easement restrictions, um, you know, again, just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, but again, that is a private agreement. So um, it's not something that uh, we, we were requiring to begin with. Um, and then there are other minor uh, technical comments, just some typos and things in the staff report. So that concludes the, the staff comments. Thank you, Rick. Uh, we'll now hear from the applicant. And I believe he's got, I think it's going to work. He's going to share the screen and he's got some a presentation to make too. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's going to be Eric Everhart or Michael Burke going first, but gentlemen proceed. Thank you, Brad, and, and thank you, Commission members. It's Eric Everhart here. Uh, my my office address is 1160 South Millage Avenue. Um, I'm an attorney here with the law firm Everhart and Hale. Also present tonight uh, is Michael Burke. Um, I don't have Michael's address. If you need it, he can share it. It may be on the report itself, but Michael is Quick Trips real estate project manager. So between between the two of us, uh, we will be making the presentation tonight. And, and to start with, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about Quick Trip. And, and I will 
I will use the term QT and quick trip interchangeably. It's, it's, it's the same. I mean, you, you've seen them in other communities and, and at this point, uh, quick trip wants to bring their first multi-service store to Athens at, at the location that was described the old abandoned Logan's Roadhouse, the intersection of the loop and the Atlanta highway. Um, and, and I would submit that this is a business partner that this community would, would want and, and should want. Uh, QT has, has, has really done positives in the communities that they're, they're present in. Uh, they add about 25 new jobs to, to a community. Year over year, they're in the top 100 uh, Forbes list of, of businesses to work for. Uh, they offer tremendous benefits to their employees and including in a community like ours, uh, they support their employees with with a tuition reimbursement program for for advanced education. So so QT wants to be here and and I think that that the community really should want to, to see them here. Um, the location that that is desired um, QT would be the only multipurpose store within a, about a half a mile. Um, currently, you guys know this location, it's vacant. It's been vacant for some time now. And quite frankly, uh, without some reasonable accommodations to address the issue with, with a parking easement that is binding uh, to anyone that, that takes this property, it's going to remain vacant. Uh, it's just it's just how it is from a legal standpoint. Um, but QT wants to utilize the space, and and with the approval of of the planned unit development that's being presented, uh, would be be able to do so. Uh, just just plainly though, it's legally impossible for QT uh, to meet. The all the standards related to parking spaces at this location, um, all because of of an existing binding parking easement that exists between the current property owner and yeah. the neighboring property owner. And most of you are aware of this, but that neighboring property owner is is the Olive Garden. So there were two side by side restaurants, and and back in two thousand three. There, there was an easement agreement reached between those two, those two property owners uh, to have essentially what I'm going to refer to as cross parking. Uh, but part of the agreement uh, is that the parties, the owners of these properties will not reduce the amount of spaces on either tract. Um, and um, I think we may have one or more lawyers on the commission, but it's a, it's a perpetual easement. Uh, it's not a restrictive covenant. It, it doesn't expire. So this parking easement's going to continue forever unless there there are agreements made um, between the landowners. And and I know staff is concerned about how does this affect affect or how does this come into play when when the county is is trying to apply its its zoning standards, but. But realistically, um, it just does. It either there's going to be some concession made, or this property is pretty much going to going to stand in its current state going forward. Now, I, I think it's I think it's uh, maybe being suggested to, in some ways that QT is really not trying to meet ACC standards, and and I I would submit on their behalf that's really not the case. And and while I agree there are 12 waivers, um, and it seems like a lot, by the time we get to the end of the process, I submit that just won't be the case at all. Um, and I submit that really what's going to be left is things that are necessary to deal with with this easement that that we've got no control over. Um, in fact. Several will be several of the waivers are going to be withdrawn. For instance, the one about about uh, the parking, the front parking where there's already a variance in place that was submitted um, as a precaution just to make sure that that there wouldn't be an issue with it going forward. And then there there'll be several others 
uh, they'll be withdrawn as a result of staff input. But still, just to be extremely clear with everybody, a, a few waivers uh -huh. are going to be needed to accommodate the parking easement. And seems like now's probably about as good a time as any to, to sort of identify why there's a problem here. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm just going to ask to to make sure that it does come through. You're up. It's okay. Good. So, and you're, so and you're at about four and a half minutes right now, Eric. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> thank you. So what what we're looking at is the actual easement itself and and in this language in in four uh, Logan's would be our property Athens is the Olive Garden and it just essentially says that that each side grants the other uh, the benefit of reciprocal non-exclusive easement for parking on the on the stripe parking spaces there's no limitation to it uh, and and just going forward I mean here's where it runs forever runs with whoever owns this property. Here's our problem. To try to contest this or fight it, there are attorney's fees that are gonna be assessed against the party that loses. And right now, my advice to Quick Trip is that this is an enforceable agreement that they can't break, uh, particularly when we get to section nine of the easement, which says there's no modifications without the consent of the other party and any changes to the respect, respective partials which materially calls the loss of parking spaces is considered a modification. So, so we're stuck with it. And, and what we're stuck with, guys, is the following. This is the, the plat that was attached to, to that easement agreement. And it outlines the parking. There's 134 spaces on this particular plat. That's what was agreed to to be binding among the parties. Now, over the last six months, and, and this includes the time within which uh, QT has had an option. They don't own this property. They have an option to buy it, and they've had to extend it a couple of times during the course of negotiations with Olive Garden. We have an agreement with Olive Garden to reduce this 134 to 88. <laughs> So we've got a reduction of, of over, over 45 spaces that we've already taken away. Guys, if you don't let Quick Trip do this, then anybody coming along that doesn't use the building as it exists today is gonna run into the same problem, we believe. Two minutes. Thank you. So, so in essence, our waivers um, in particular that are necessary are one, seven, and eight related to the easement. There are a couple of others um, in, in regards to canopy and things like that that we're trying to, to assess if we can adjust or not, but, but all of that stems around the, the easement issue um, and the need for some accommodation. Uh, essentially, guys, uh, quick trips a quality, respected business, and it's, and it's something that will serve this area well, this location. Um, and, and, and they've worked with Olive Garden to the extent that Olive Garden will. They're, they don't have to do any of this, and they won't probably do it with a restaurant if it comes along, but they've done it with us. We just need the county to help us get the rest of the way. Michael, anything to add? In, in one minute. Guys, I'd open it to questions otherwise. Uh, we'll Mr. Burke, I, it looked like you were trying to speak, but you're muted. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add in your final minute? You know, I will add uh, that that there was a mention yeah. of a traffic study that's currently in process. So we're addressing that and some of the other things outside the waiver. We're in the process of working with the various departments to 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 satisfy those concerns. Thanks, Eric. And, and no, I didn't have anything to add. Sorry, I was having a rookie moment um, here. I think Eric covered us um, pretty well um, on, on on this and we would just be ecstatic to be a part of the west side of Athens. So 
We're right on time too, gentlemen. Thank you. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Mr. Eberhardt and, and Mr. Burke. Um, at this time, we'll turn it over to public comment. Is there anyone in the auditorium who wishes to speak in favor of this application? I think yeah. there's still no one in there. That's correct. Okay. Um, if uh, there, there's no one there except Commissioner Hool, is that except for, correct? Except for Commissioner Hool, yes. Okay. Uh, well, do, does Commissioner Hool wish to speak in favor of or against this application? I would advise him not to at this point. <laughs> All right. Uh, at that point, we'll take it behind the rail and um, open it up to uh, planning commissioner discussion. Alice. Um, so, first of all, uh, I will say that I love Quick Trip. Um, uh, we probably didn't need the whole uh, discussion about why Quick Trip is the best place to stop for your gas and your coffee and your, because everybody knows that it is. Um, uh, but uh, more to the point, um, I am very concerned about the number of waivers here. Um, I appreciate the uh, both the you know Rick addressing that as part of the staff report and the applicant seeing it. Sorry, that's my dog. Um, but uh, that, that, that's going to be really important to me that we don't have to approve this with uh, whatever it is, two dozen waivers or a dozen. So that's all for now. Okay. Thank you, Alice. Uh, any other commissioners? Yes, Lucy. This kind of breaks my heart because, you know, I remember when the mall, you know, what we all call Athens Mall or, Athens, or George Mall, that was all nothing but fields. And this was as well. And this was very bad designed going back decades. And I think it's so sad that this even happened where Olive Garden and Roadhouse came together and did this. I mean, it was just all bad. It was never well done from the very beginning. And I'm so sad for Quick Trip having to deal with something that came out as a legal document that didn't have to happen. It was just, it was bad design. It was bad planning. I don't think we can blame athens Clark County on it. I think it just came down to the fact that people really didn't understand what the heck they were getting into. It all seemed like, quote, a good diet, good idea at the time. And I'm really sorry about that. I really want to see this um, resolved and resolved um, in a way that this can, that Quick Trip can get it taken care of. I don't know if we can do it. I mean, I really don't. But that's my feeling on this. I think it really comes down to, um, I would like to see this work. I, I agree with Alice, the number of waivers is scary. But we've dealt with lots of things that have come in in the past with, with uh, preliminary plan developments where everything was scary. And then when they came back as uh, final um, developments, they were not scary. So that's what I'm hoping for the petitioner that this can all get kind of compressed back down to what it should be. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lucy. Uh, Kristen. Um, I think my only, you know, so I'm not usually one to really worry too much about traffic. I mean, I feel like there's always going to be traffic no matter what, but um, this particular area is just a nightmare um and i you know i know between roadhouse and olive garden like they would get a lot of crowds there would always be people in those parking lots but i feel like a convenience store gets way more in and out short trips people back and forth and the location right next to the loop like this like at the literally like on the on-ramp um i'm just like I mean, this is where I'm, I'm looking at it from like a planning perspective. Like, is this really the best place for a, 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 a gas station convenience store? Just because of the, I get you want to be close to a, a, an interstate kind of road, but I mean, it's like right there. It's so inconvenient for like literally half the people driving past there. And so um, 
that was really my main balk at all of this was just like, holy crap, you want to get this kind of development in that little corner of the space that's basically an on-ramp to a freeway. Um, so that honestly is just kind of like, I just sort of have an issue with the location of this in general. Um, as far as the parking goes, um, I don't know. It's hard for me to see a business that's already been there and that, that they, I get that the, the, the legal situation of it kind of sucks, but like, I mean, it's also hard to see a business that was fine and it was the pandemic that closed it, like no fault of their own. And, you know, it, I just, I don't know. I think that there, I'd like to see that get worked out and not have to deal with waivers to work it out um, instead. So that's basically my own thing. Thank you, Kristen. Any other uh, commissioners have comments for the applicant? <laughs> Um, it, you know, I'm going to say I, I actually like the quick trip there. Um, I think that's a, a good spot for it. Um, I understand the the Logans, you know, that went out of business and and being in in real estate. I know that that's would be a tough sell for anything else to go into that footprint. Um, so I think that, you know, I like the quick trip because I like the way that the traffic lights moving down. Um, and kind of trying to help that intersection some, because, you know, I do believe that with, you know, as Kristen said, it's a nightmare. And sometimes coming out of Jennings Mill Road, that traffic light just seems to be kind of in a rough spot. So moving it down, I think will help that area. Um, I would love to see some of the waivers be reduced um, as much as we can. Um, but, you know, overall, I like, I think it's a, a great fit for Athens. It'd be a great addition right in that spot um you know and i just hope we can get the parking and all that worked out but um right now i i really like what's the way it could look and the way it could fit thank you joey uh, any other commissioners have comments just for clarification is the quick trip that we're speaking of going to be a 24-hour operation and is there any additional safety measures that need to be put in place as a result of that Michael, can you address that? Sure, absolutely. So, yes, this location is anticipated to be a 24 hour location um, and security wise, um, all of our locations are continuously monitored um, via high resolution cameras um, that are centrally monitored in our corporate office in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, and then, you know, all of our sites are um, clearly well lit. Uh, the fronts of the stores have um, large glass windows and that's on purpose so people can see uh, from the street or from the fueling pump inside and then vice versa from um, inside the store to outside. So, you know, our properties and our facilities are actively designed with security in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Um, yeah, Alice. Hey guys, sorry to prolong the discussion just a little bit more, um, uh, but but I am uh, pursuant to some previous comments. Uh, I, I did want uh, could could staff explain just a little bit more? I know it's in the in the application report, but um, the subject parcel will be affected by an ongoing GDOT project to relocate the intersection of Atlanta High with Jenny's, Jenny's Mill Road. Um, I know that the quick trip on the on the east side uh, also has had to intersect with some GDOT stuff. So um, could you just give us a quick primer on what's going on there? Sure. Um, it, is, it is part of, a, of an interchange design project that will, some of the things, if I recall off the top of my head, for example, I think once completed, if you are westbound on Atlanta Highway trying to go towards Oconee County on the loop. I don't think it's a left turn movement anymore. I think it will be a internal cloverleaf that you'll be able to get on. What it does for this location specifically is, and I think Joey was right, that the location of the current Jennings Middle Road um, intersection with the Atlanta Highway is very, very close to the eastbound off ramp of the loop. I mean, they're all, everything's kind of right there together. And it's, if you're trying to turn left, I'm going westbound on a Jennings Mill Road. It can get kind of hairy sometimes. If, if you go out there now, construction has started and you can see 
where the realignment of Jennings Mill Road is going to happen. It's actually they're, they're picking it up right at about the Somerville point on Jennings Mill and they're swinging it behind the. Uh, the package store there where, where it'll come out on the far side about where the old lazy boy shop used to be for those of you that remember that building that's now gone, but it will it will move it down far enough to where they're able to redo. It becomes a four way signalized intersection that goes into. The, the overall shopping center at the Olive Garden, so you can get into the shopping center there and then you can either go to the right and go towards the bookstore. You go to the left, go towards QT. Um, and it's backed up far enough where it, it will certainly make that left turn movement if you're going towards town on Atlanta Highway into that area much more convenient. And then a lot of the other existing current left turn movements, if you're eastbound on Atlanta Highway, are going to be closed and moved to more restricted controlled areas. So I think overall from Mitchell Bridge Road down to the racetrack on the far end of the mall, sorry guys. Um, <laughs> Will will be completely redone and and made much more safe. Thank you, Brad. Um, I just have a couple of comments that I'll offer uh, to the applicant as well. I, um, you know, my first reaction is, yeah, there are a lot of waivers here, and and um, a dozen feels like a lot. On the other hand, most of them uh, look pretty minor, um, and many of them reflect current conditions of the property such as for a waiver from conserved tree canopy, you know, they can't conserve more tree canopy than the property currently has. So some of the waivers are um, just reflect the reality on the ground there, um, which is seems entirely reasonable. Um, and just also a more general comment that, that you know, um, sometimes an applicant needs a lot of waivers because the use they plan to make of the parcel is just fundamentally incompatible with the area or with our zoning. Um, and, but that's not always the case. Sometimes there are unique conditions of the parcel. Um, and sometimes our zoning, uh, just doesn't quite fit the conditions, um, of the area. And so, um, a dozen waivers doesn't necessarily seem problematic to me, but I would, I'll just echo the commissioners who've already spoken and said that to the extent that y'all are able to resolve some of these and reduce them coming in, uh, that will be better, uh, I'll also be interested to see the results of the traffic study. Um, I'm glad to hear about what GDOT's up to over there because it is an area that's difficult um, at at busy times uh, right now. Um, and uh, it sounds like the moving of the traffic light may um, resolve some of that, and I hope so. Um, I also think the, uh, you know, I'm willing to assume that Quick Trip um, knows its business well enough to not locate a gas station on a parcel that's going to be difficult to get in and out of. So, um, you know, but I, I'm still interested to see the results of the of the traffic study. Um, so uh, if nobody else has any other comments, um, I'll entertain a motion. Just all we do is receive with comments. Oh, right. Thank you. Uh, I forgot. So, yeah. Uh, thank you uh, to the applicant and. Uh, Brad, I guess we're. Uh, Ready to move yes. on to our next. Yeah, item. we we will move on, and and we're certainly you know, we're happy and willing to continue working with the applicant. I, I think we can. There are some options and ideas to to for that we can help with eliminating some of these variances as well or waivers. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, now we'll move to the last item on the agenda, which is 473 and 481 Little Oak Street. Another preliminary plan development for comments only at tonight's meeting. And Rick will give the report. Okay, is that better? Yes, that did it. <laughs> Finally figured it out. Thanks. Uh, Alice actually had the right answer. I was using the wrong option. <laughs> okay, so uh, the last case tonight is 473 and 481 Little Oak Street. Um, and this is a request uh, from the RS5 single family residential airport overlay to a PD. And there's two lots, sub two subject parcels uh, at this time, and there's a request to break the two into three lots. So, um, as you can see, the, the, the hatching again is the airport overlay, and the, the properties are totally covered. This whole area is in the airport overlay. 
So uh, aerial view showing the two existing houses to be at this time removed from the from the properties. The traditional neighborhood future landings would remain. Um, the zoning R S five underlying zoning would remain. Uh, again, we're here because of the airport overlay. Um, the request is to meet the R S five standards um, to split the two lots into three, and the airport overlay has a one acre. Uh, lot size requirement. So uh, that's the reason for the PD. Um, the those the three proposed parcels are actually compatible uh, with underlying RS5 zoning standards. If it, so, if it was not an airport overlay, um, this would not be before you tonight. Um, there is no change against the future land use. Um, the again, the existing conditions: the two houses on the left, and then on the right, you can see the three proposed houses. And the architectural elevations, uh, these two would be on the, the bookends, the lots, proposed lots one and three. Uh, I'm sorry, this, these, this elevation, these elevations would be on the bookend lots, and then this one would be in the middle. <clears throat> and this is uh, a rendering there. And then um, the airport authority, uh, it's not a special use, or it's not, uh, it's not required. Have a special use, like a special use, would have a formal recommendation. But we did send this to the airport authority since the waiver is in the airport ordinance uh, part of the airport part of the ordinance. So the airport authority did look at this, and they have expressed no concerns uh, for this proposal. Um, staff would there were some reasons given for the for the PD. Um, uh, staff uh, again, we're going from two lots to three lots. Um, so everyone is under the same one acre restriction, and we're just not sure why uh, the two parcels, the two houses could be removed and two houses replace uh, those. Um, so not sure why why the PD, why they have need for the extra lot. But the comprehensive plan does stress preservation and rehabilitation of existing housing stock within the urban core. Um, the houses, um, I would say they're compatible with the two new houses that have been built recently to the east side, uh, but they are larger and higher than the, uh, the houses down the block. And then um, just technically, the application report mentions a furnished sidewalk, and just want to make sure that's shown on the binding site plan, as well as approach walks from the, um, uh, to the front doors. And then um, further information is needed to make sure we're meeting some standards such as fenestration, um, maximum front yard coverage for the driveway area, and the minimum building setbacks. Uh, that's the, uh, the finished uh, grading elevation, so we can make sure there's variable setbacks here. We'll make sure we're meeting the minimum setbacks. So that concludes the staff report. Okay, thank you, Rick. And I think we lost at one point Matt and Alice, but I think they're both back now. So. No, you didn't. Uh, you didn't lose me. I heard everything. I was just uh, eating a few bites of dinner with my video off. Okay. Good. Uh, it, 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 if if I may, I just got a text from Monique. She's been kicked off. Um, yeah, I, there there is a transformer that blew, and that kicked my internet, my electricity off and back on. I texted texted Matt, so you'll see that. Um, but uh, yeah, Monique isn't here right now, but um, she's gonna try to get back on. Okay, I was I was watching it. We we still have a quorum. This is not a voting item, so I think we can go ahead and proceed. Thank you, Brad. Um, at this time, we'll hear from the applicant. Can you hear me fine? Yes. yes. Great, great. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Um, I'm Jeffrey Halls, owner of uh, J Halls Real Estate, address 2017 Stonewater Court, Houston, Georgia. Um, I think the application report pretty much explains everything that I'm trying to do. Um, I think I did this about a year ago with you all in the past. Um, basically, we're just trying to revamp uh, the neighborhood. Um, I think one of the main concerns that the staff has is that the houses um, currently built or the ones that I'm trying to build now doesn't fit into the um, traditional style neighborhood and doesn't meet the surrounding um, houses. Um, I think that's you all's main concern in the scale and the size. Um, to that, I 
the houses that I'm building are actually um, half the size of one of the houses that's on the existing um, property. Um, 490, 491 is the foot plan for that is 3,100 uh, square feet. Uh, where my biggest house, the foot plan is 1,500 um, square foot. Um, as far as the height, the houses that I've currently built, build right beside um, these two lots, it's pretty much the same exact um, height as uh, 491 as well. Um, so the I'm kind of confused as far as the, the scale, you know, that you may be looking for. In my opinion, obviously, because I'm I'm trying to build the homes, I think it fit, fits in just well and just working out on the two ones that we have going up right now. I've spoken to uh, a bunch of the neighbors and they like um, the building. I had one person uh, voice a concern thinking that um, it was going to be student houses. But um, again, we're building for families, not students. That's the plan. I'm not keeping the houses. I'm selling them to individual families. Um, I think it, it fits well. You have um, the fire trail right beside it, which is looks new and it looks like you guys are continuing to build that. Um, there's a brand new racetrack right across the street as well. So I think cleaning the corner of uh, Little Oak fits directly into what's going on in the, the area um, as we speak. Um, that's all I have. I think it's pretty simple and cut and dry. I mean, I'm, I'm adding one house, not five or six to, you know, the property. So I, I had an option to do four, but I decided to do three because it fits more into the traditional look um, instead of creating something that looks more like student housing. So um, in a nutshell, that's that's all I have. If you have any con comments, concerns, questions, I can fill those when, whenever you guys would like. Thank you, Mr. Halls. Yes, sir. Is there, it doesn't look like there's anyone in the uh, auditorium other than Commissioner Poole, is that uh, right? That is correct. Okay. Um, well, at this point, we'll take it behind the rail uh, for comment by the commissioners. Lucy. Uh, Muted. I hate WebEx. Can I say that uh, online? Anyway. I would like to ask Mr. Hawes, what is his price point on these houses and the previous houses that he's built? Um, the price point currently, um, the previous houses that I built, um, they're going to be between 450 and five. And that's simply because I'm not sure if anybody builds, but the cost of building is honestly just higher than what it normally was. I built the same plan and sold them for 279 in the past. And they sold, um, but I built them a lot cheaper. So to build the, the current houses, it, it, it costs more than that um, at this present moment in time. Um, also putting in a sidewalk, I probably bit off a little bit more than I could chew as well. I'm not sure if either of you all have been by the property, but um, the curb, um, the sidewalk just got put in because um, we were going back and forth as far as what all we had to rip out, having to take road out, we had to take existing curves out you know to renew it as requested by the um the inspectors so um it, the cost is is way significantly higher than what i thought it would be going into it um the price point uh, for what i'm trying to build which obviously is um, similar homes would be between probably right around the 400 range if pricing goes down but obviously if it stays where it is building materials higher it stay around the same price point. Thank you, Mr. Hawes. Um, any other comments by commissioners? Kristen. Um, so I, I recognize that, like, I feel like we're looking at this as just more of like, at, a, like, I don't know. I mean, it, there's, because of the airport overlay, you know, I know I recognize what could be built there by right if the airport overlay weren't there. Um, so it, I feel like I'm sort of speaking with like a sense of irony about all of this, but like, um, 
I, I mourn the loss of the current houses in the neighborhood. I, um, I recognize you're saying you're building these houses on smaller footprints, but, um, I, I don't like that we're losing existing housing stock to get newer, more expensive, really un completely unaffordable houses. Um, you know, I get the building materials are expensive. Maybe just wait a little bit. <laughs> the price of lumber has already gone down. So, um, and I, when I initially saw this picture of the houses, like, I honestly thought this was one house. Um, it reminded me there's a website called McMansion Hell, and it looked like it came from that website. Um, just I, like I didn't understand how these houses were separated. So um, that's, I mean, and it, they look a lot like the other houses that you built in East Athens. So it's just like we're, we're losing cool, smaller, original houses to get replaced by sort of cookie cutter houses that already exist in the neighborhood. And I get that we're not a design board. Like there's nothing against like the zoning and all of this, but I'm just using this as my platform to tell you, like, I'm not, I don't like what's going on here. So thanks. Thank you, Kristen. Um, other commissioners, Jim, I think you had your hand up and then Taylor. Yes, I would echo uh, Kristen's concerns and I'm, I'm particularly concerned that we're potentially uh, rolling up the uh, neighborhood like a zipper and uh, essentially gentrifying people out of affordable housing. Uh, probably not intentionally, but that'll be a consequence of it. I'm also somewhat uh, dismayed that one of the houses you plan to replace is a uh, salt box design. There are about a dozen of those in my neighborhood, which is Whitehall, which were built in conjunction with a historic mill that used to be there. And uh, we're losing some history in the process. They're very interesting structures. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, um, I, uh, I ride by those houses every day. I live over that way. Uh, I go to church down the street at East Friendship Baptist Church right there on the uh, corner of Old Winterville and Art Street. And so I have... Um, well, I got strong ties to that community. Uh, and to hear that the housing is 400 to 500,000, that's pretty ridiculous for that area. I mean, there's not another house around there going for that price. Nobody in that neighborhood, most people in that neighborhood, been there for at least 30, 30 years. Uh, I've known people having to move out of their home just for the simple fact. Oh, uh, get these homes built over there. Uh, there's, a, there's a lady down the street, probably about two or three houses down from where you're building on that corner. People call her every day uh, trying to buy her property. She owns her home. She owns a home next door. Uh, but yeah, people call her every day to buy that property try to get her out of her home that she's built, made a, uh, made a living. Uh, mom died in the home. Uh, I mean, and to see that we, we threatening them uh, by continuing to add these expensive homes, which is ultimately just going to drive them out of the neighborhood uh, because the taxes will have to go up. Somebody got to pay for it. So, uh, I, I just don't agree. I definitely don't agree with adding a third home on that lot. So that's just my two cents. Thank you, Taylor. Um, other commissioners? Joey. Um, first, I would say I, I, I like the project. Um, I like the revitalization of areas. Um, I'm not one that would say I'd, you know, you had to keep the house, the house that's standing there, there just because it's been standing there. Um, you know, it's, I don't mind seeing change and seeing the new development. I love what you're doing. I love the two houses on the corner. Um, I think it's making the, it's just, it's really um, looks great for the area. Um, you know, I struggle with the price. 
I do struggle with the price. Um, I'm I'm in that field. Um, that's what I do, and and I have a hard time seeing that price point there. Um, so you know, I think that you may want to to look at things. I know it's been suggested wait to building costs come down or re-examine materials inside or or something to that level. Um, because I do see that tough tough to get um tough to get in in, in a lot of area in Athens, honestly. Um, so, you know, I do struggle with the price, but I do like what you're doing. I do like, I don't mind taking the, the two to three. Um, it adds another home there. Um, it really looks great along the, the belt line or the, excuse me, the green space. I've got belt line on my mind, so I don't know the correct term for it. Firefly trail. Yes, the trail. Thank you. Um, I like the way that it looks there. So um, keep doing the good work that you're doing. Um, you know, I love to see it come back and love to, to try to help get this, get this to that area. Thank you, Joey. Um, are, any, are there any other commissioners uh, who want to comment? Alice. Um, I'll just make one comment and I'll try to keep this quick because it really doesn't apply to what the applicant is asking for. Um, but it does apply to uh, how we make land use and zoning policy in Athens. And that is that this Firefly Trail has been funded and ready to go for years. And we still haven't gotten ahead of how we might, you know, consider, uh, you know, asking an applicant like this one who's obviously already built a great project um, uh, to, to contribute to our affordable housing problems. So. Um, I'm, I'm just putting that out there in the in the public forum. Um, it, it does not relate directly to what the applicant is asking. So just thought I would throw that out there. Thank you, Alice. Um, if nobody else has any comments, um, I, I have a few things uh, I, I want to say. Um, one is that, uh, you know, which, Mr. Hawes, what you've uh, already built down the street, um, mm -hmm. You know, I, ho I hope you're able to sell those uh, places. And uh, I, I share some of the concerns that you've heard from some of my fellow commissioners about uh, the price point um, and whether that's what Athens needs and, and whether that neighborhood um, can sustain um, houses at that price. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to um, just suggest, since you've asked us to, you know, th the purpose of today's um, presentation is is to get our comments on it. I want to suggest um, an alternative way. I understand you're trying to provide housing that the community needs, um, and you're trying to do so uh, through private enterprise in a way that that makes you a profit and also provides something that the members of the community um, are going to be able to buy and are going to want to buy. And I, I share um, Kristen and Taylor's concerns about gentrification in that neighborhood, and I I, um, I am concerned as as I think Taylor said that. The people who live there now, uh, the people who grew up there, are uh, it's, it's not that many of them that are going to be able to afford a $500,000 house. Uh, and um, looking at this parcel, what struck me was that it's a whole lot of land. It's It um, presents something that we see a lot of in Athens, which is uh, quite a deep lot. These two pieces together total, it looks like uh, it's just, just under three quarters of an acre. Um, and I wondered, uh, I just wanted to throw out uh, for you before you, as, as you decide how to proceed here, um, the, uh, you may be uh, aware already, uh, the Planning Commission has been working on the affordable housing problem in Athens for uh, more than a year now at the mayor's instructions. And one of the uh, things that's come out of that that is still percolating up um, on a legislative level that um, may well result in legislative change here um, within the next year is uh, is to facilitate affordable housing by facilitating building more dwelling units um, on a parcel like this, more smaller dwelling units on a parcel like this. Uh, are, Mr. Haas, uh, you may be familiar with the concept of a cottage court, um, which is a uh, collection of small cottages um, typically not not all fronting the street, but arranged around a central shared courtyard um, so that everybody has a large yard that's that's shared. Um, 
And I would I ran uh, off camera for a moment to grab a book that I'm going to show you uh, called Missing Middle Housing um, that many of us own copies of. And it's been part of the affordable housing work that we have done. It's by a fellow named Dan Parolek in uh, out in California. Uh, and it uh, I don't know, it's 30 bucks or something like that. I, I uh, think it would be money well spent for a, a small entrepreneurial real estate developer like yourself, uh, because a parcel like this might lend itself to not three large expensive houses, but um, perhaps six small affordable houses um, that would be more consistent with the size of houses in that neighborhood and with the price points that would be achievable by the people who already live in that neighborhood or the people who want to live in that neighborhood. Um, and so I just wanted to suggest that to you um, as something to think about, because you got a big backyard here that um, that doesn't get used um, under the site plan that you've presented uh, as your concept today. Um, and maybe that could be used to provide more housing. Um, and as a result, it would enable you to, to uh, you know, uh, keep your costs down if you're building 1,400 square foot, three bedroom cottages rather than 2,000 plus square foot cottages. Uh, so um, just some thoughts um, for you to, to consider as you're, as you're um, deciding how and when to proceed. Uh, yeah, and if you'd like to respond to that, I, 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 uh, or, or if you have any clarification that you wanted to ask, of course, uh, feel free. Can I? Go ahead, Mr. Hall. You're muted, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. So, the, the, can you hear me? Yes. yes the size of the houses is um, like 1755. That's one for two of them, that's the square footage. And uh, I'm sorry, two, one is 1755 and the other is right around 2000. So, I, I mean, I don't think, um, I mean, in my opinion, I don't feel like the houses are huge. I think in the comments, it's, it's, it's like the houses are just, you know, big, humongous houses. If you go into the houses that I built, they're, they're not big at all. I mean, they're, like I said, the same height as the current home that's there and I mean, they're just not huge houses. The ideal of the cottage um, development, I did explore that, and that was kind of shut down and recommend. I tried to do four. I think four is the most that I can get on the size of the land that I, that I have combined. So I decided to go with three, trying to make it kind of fit into the tradition of what's going on right now in the neighborhood, what the houses look like. Obviously, these are newer homes. Even if I, re even if I go in and remodel, the two houses that's there, it's, it's the cost is going to cost. It's going to be expensive because I mean they're pretty much got to be torn down to the slab to rebuild those houses. That's an option, but um, I I just I figure less is is better. Three three versus asking for four would be better. But I, like I said, I'm listening and taking in all the comments that you're that you're giving me, and will consider you know each and and everything. But if I go in and turn it into a cottage and now I'm creating a situation where instead of keeping it as a traditional home, like everyone is wanting, that's more of a, a feel of student housing again. So uh, I'm listening and, and taking it all in. And, and uh, that's, that's just my only comment on, on that one. I like the idea. That was my initial idea. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Uh, Joey, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I, I have a, another comment just for clarification. And I know it's been said before, but without the airport overlay, this could be approved as presented or only two, not three, without the airport overlay. Even even with the airport overlay, they, he could build two houses on the two lots that are existing. Okay. If, if the airport overlay was not in place, he has enough land and enough frontage on the street to subdivide it into three. To do three, okay. Um, I just want to make a comment based on, you know, kind of what's been said. Um, I agree, you know, wholeheartedly there's a affordable housing um, issue, the missing middle um, for Athens. I agree with that. Um, I do think it's kind of wrong at times that we try to force that on every developer and every development. 
Um, it doesn't fit every development. It doesn't fit every area. It doesn't fit every uh, applicant that comes into the room. And I think that we as commissioners, and I hope our mayor and commission listen to that, that it, it needs to be looked at in case by case. I think this this young man is doing a great um, a great project for that area. Um, if it hadn't been for the airport overlay, none of us would have gotten the opportunity to speak to him about this. It would have been done. And, you know, I think there's ways that I hope we continue to research for affordable housing, um, you know, to look at old buildings, you know, around town, to look at different opportunities that we might have for affordable housing. But I think that we need to, you know, look at these applicants and not always try to think that this young man needs to build a house there for $100,000 or whatever you deem that's affordable housing, because I will tell you there's a need for housing at all price points in Athens. Um, we have a housing shortage. Um, we have a housing shortage in the entire community. Um, surrounding counties as well. So, you know, there's a need for all price points. So affordable housing is defined in, in different ways to different people, uh, but we do need to continue to look at that. But I just, I, sometimes I just, I have a hard time listening to us talk to every applicant and tell them that they need to be an affordable housing component when it just doesn't fit every property. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Um, Alice. Uh, just in case Joey was directing his, his remarks to my remarks specifically, and it, he may well have been because I've been working in affordable housing issues for a while at the local level. Um, I, I did want to make it clear, and I'll say it again. I wanted to say what I said for the public record, not in direct response to this, to Mr. Hall's application. Um, the, the, all this discussion about price points. Um, of course, he's building the houses that he can uh, build and, you know, getting the margin that he needs to to get to be able to afford to build the houses. I think Joey's absolutely right there. You know, there there is a shortage of housing at every price point here. Um, so um, so I guess, Joey, I guess I'm saying I respect what 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 you were saying, but I wanted to make it clear that my comments really had to do more with a broader policy issue. And uh, sorry, Mr. Halls, that you had to, you know, be an applicant sitting here to listen to that. Um, uh, and I'm happy to move on to, uh, uh, well, this is a comments only, uh, but I'm happy to move on to that. Thank you, Alice. Um, does anyone uh, from the commission have any other comments? All right. Okay, so this will be received with comments and it will return as a master uh, as soon as our October meeting. And then that's up to Mr. Hall, so he's at his own pace at this point. All right, thank you. Uh, and, and Mr. Hall, one other thing occurred to me to mention to you uh, on the subject of cottage courts. Um, you may be aware, it's a public record that uh, the Planning Commission approved a couple of years ago. Um, a, a cottage court application over on Millard Street, M-I-L-L-A-R-D. Um, and it's a parcel that I believe is 1.05 acres. So it's a bit bigger than yours. And it has seven cottages um, on it. So uh, the uh, planning department staff may be able to get you more information about that the, uh, if you're interested in pursuing that uh, idea further. It sounds like you've already thought about that a little bit. And if you want to look at something that's already been approved in Athens, uh, that, uh, that's a project that's out there. I believe the applicant's name on that was Matt Tingle, T-I-N-G-L-E. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, that's just for your information. Uh, you are, of course, free to uh, present to us uh, for a vote. And when you come back, whatever sort of application you want, whether it be three houses, five or six cottages or, or whatever it is that you choose to pursue um, with this. Uh, but uh, just wanted to, to put that in your hopper uh, for uh, for you to consider. Um, Can I voice one more, one more thing? Well, it, actually, unless a planning commission member has a question that they need okay. information uh, from you on, uh, 
that's not the normal process. Um, I see two oh, commissioner yes. hands just went up. So uh, Monique and, and, and Alex. Uh, I yield, yes. sorry. Yep. So I had an interruption in my internet, so I did miss a couple of things, but two two questions I had. Um, are these rentals, are these buy to own uh, properties? And then if they are rentals, is there federal or special financing involved? They're all buy to own. Okay. Yes. Alice, did you uh, have a question or comment? Uh, no, I, I, actually, I think Monique actually covered it. So thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, so that concludes that item, which brings us to the final uh, portion of our agenda, other business. Um, there's no planning commission chairs report. Um, Brad, do you have a uh, director's report? I, I do have a brief director's report. Um, we did have a commission meeting Tuesday night that encompassed two months worth of your recommendations to them. So I'll go over those quickly in terms of outcomes. The First item they considered was the renaming of Carriage Court to Ariel Calloway Avenue. That item was tabled until their September meeting um, to, there appeared to be some last minute discussions regarding um, preferred naming of the street and, and a couple of other things that the commission opted to just wait for an additional 30 days to make sure it was clear and they had clear assurance from the family that this is the direction they wanted to go in. So that was held. Um, Carlton North, this was 115 Grand Allen Drive, the single family house that you looked at, I think at your last meeting, it was approved as recommended by you all with the conditions, including the two and a half bathroom restriction, stayed in place as part of the ordinance on that house. Uh, WNA Engineering for New Oak Grove area, this was um, Oak Grove, the sign amendment, it was approved. Uh, Cabot Creek Consulting, which was 5090 and 5098 Old Jefferson Road. This was the RS8 to 5 rezone for the townhouses. It was withdrawn by the applicant, but had to be voted on by the commission due to legal advertising. Uh, the River Cliff Tallahassee Road rezoning from RS25 to AR was approved as recommended. The special use for the Calvary Bible Church at 295 Tallahassee Road was approved as recommended by the Planning Commission. And then the uh, PD amendment at uh, Somerville, the West Park LLC to CNPD for the um, condominium units in place of the mixed use building at Somerville, it was held. Um, until their September meeting again, they're to, just to assure that the neighborhood. The neighbors on the circle clearly understood what was being developed. There was some confusion um, or, or some concern by the district commissioner, and he just felt it prudent to hold it for one more month. So that that concludes those items. The only other item of business I've got, and Lucy, I am sorry because I completely agree with you on WebEx, but where we were planning on going back to in-person meetings next month with the new mask mandate and some of the other things that have come down the pike, we are kind of in a holding pattern right now. We will continue to meet via WebEx until further notice. And I don't, at this point, that's going to be based on trends and what's going on. And we were, we were ready to go to, and we've gone back to basically closed door in the office meeting virtually, even with our regular customers and wearing masks in the office again, even when we're among ourselves. So. I just I don't think it's prudent to try to go back to a public meeting and ask everybody in the audience and you all to sit in that configuration and wear a mask for several hours. So we'll continue to do it this way until we can go back to, to normal operations. I apologize, but that's kind of where we are. And, and that's all I have for you this evening. Thank you, Brad. Um, the last item under other business is miscellaneous announcements. Uh, are, is there anything under that? Other than that, that's that's all I have. I don't know if any of the planning commissioners have anything. Alice. Uh, Matt, you could probably do this as well as I can, but I wonder if we should update the planning commission on the mayor's working group on inclusionary zoning at all. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, what, a, what a fine idea, and I uh, will defer to you um, to make that presentation. Uh, I, I do not have a prepared 
presentation, um, but uh, I, I did want everyone to know that this group has been working, uh, meeting every two weeks and staff has been working really hard on a draft ordinance. Um, the, the goal here is to uh, uh, make a recommendation to the mayor and commission on how to uh, adopt an inclusionary, a voluntary inclusionary zoning ordinance um, that would hopefully capture some of the of, of, of the surplus demand maybe we have on the supply side. Um, uh, as planning commissioners, we've seen for the last couple of years, uh, developers off offering um, will make a certain number of units affordable. And, um, and I think we've all been happy to hear that, but we've also kind of been thinking we don't really have a structure or a, you know, a, a way to do that as planning commissioners. All, all we can say is, yeah, good idea. But um, so, uh, so this group has been working. Um, Brad is staffing us along with um, Haley Banerjee from um, HCD and we've got uh, Sherry Hines from the attorney's office um, and Nikki Jones from the manager's office. And um, I think we're making real progress. Uh, which means that uh, you guys are, um, if we can do my timeline, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably be seeing something in a couple of months. Thank you, Alice. Um, any other uh, miscellaneous announcements? And if not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Alice. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. Lucy, second. All in favor. Great to see you guys. Um, I will be sending out uh, an email to everyone uh, shortly, uh, just a, of a more uh, social nature, uh, not planning commission business. Um, so uh, please look for that in your inboxes in the next 24 hours or so. I would just real quickly say good job to Matt. This one, this he had about two hours notice today to prepare for this. So well done. Uh, under the circumstance, yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, well done, given the lack of time for preparation. Thank you, Brett. <laughs> All right. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.